Good evening. I'm David Swotek, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. A record was broken during the Husker women's basketball matchup Saturday night against the Iowa Hawkeyes. The game was watched the most watched women's basketball broadcast in BTN's history with over 421,000 viewers. Head coach Amy Williams was asked during the press conference what this means for women's sports. Just, it never gets old to, to be at a place like Nebraska where women's sports are celebrated and where we continue to have the opportunity to be a part of record setting um, things. Um, you know, we're playing in front of sellout crowds. We're, we're having people tell me that it's the most watched game on Big Ten Network ever. Um, you know, those kinds of things. I, I just feel honored to, um, to be a part of that. And I think there's a lot of special things and people that go into making those kinds of things happen. And it makes me incredibly grateful to, to be doing this right now at Nebraska and in the Big Ten Conference with all the things that we're able to do. Coming up later in the show, we will hear more from head coach Amy Williams. The Nebraska softball team has already received some recognition. As a team, the Huskers are ranked within the top 25 based on four different polls. And the three individuals, Billy Andrews, Jordy Ball, and Caitlin Kaneda, have all earned preseason recognition. Nebraska opens the softball season on February 8th against number seven Washington in Mexico. Finally, let's take a look at some Big Ten hoops action tonight. And on the men's side, number 14 Illinois is not heading far to Ohio State for their matchup tonight with tip-off at 6 p.m. Indiana is hosting the Iowa Hawkeyes tonight with the same tip-off time of 6 p.m. Both teams lost their last game, so there will be a winner tonight for sure. Some same state action, Michigan and Michigan State have their game a little later starting at 8 p.m. And on the women's side, just one game tonight, Michigan State is heading east to New Jersey to face off against Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights haven't won a game since December 5th and are hoping to dig out of that hole tonight. Tip-off is set for 6 p.m. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Coming up next is the first hour of Sports Nightly, right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly, all the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. It's Williams, a drop step, reverse layup with a left hand, and Mast is just dissecting Edie early in this game. Deep left wing, Jazz Shelley to take the lead. You betcha! Shelley bombed a triple from the left wing and a big red lead at 36-34. On the right side to Hoiberg, right to left, top of the circle, reverses it off the throw. CJ, three is good! Got it! Bang, all right! CJ Wilcher is on fire! Goes off the bounce, goes behind your back, works foul line, pots for three, top of the key, you! Betcha! Natalie Potts, the Big Ten freshman of the week with a triple. 15 on the shot clock. Now he comes to the left side after spinning away from Barry. High post on a pop out to Mass. Nine on the shot clock. The handoff on the shot by Tominaga. Got it! Got it! Bang! 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 They say Tominaga! Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome to another a full two hours of Sports Nightly. We're going to have this one tonight. Then we have just a couple of mini versions the next two nights with Husker basketball, the women tomorrow, the men on Thursday, and then back with a full two hours coming your way on Friday night. Big show coming your way. We're going to hear from the newest coach on Matt Rural's staff here in a few minutes, the co-offense quarter, quarterbacks coach Glenn Thomas, who spent this past year in Pittsburgh as a member of the Steelers staff. We're uh, going to have him here in a couple of minutes. We're going to hear some more clips from Amy Williams' press conference today ahead of their game with Purdue tomorrow night. Lexi Rodriguez, she uh, is getting some fun to get to do some fun stuff in yeah. the offseason. Yeah, huge coming off a huge NIL opportunity with Walmart. And so we're going to talk to her about that and 
just uh, overall NIL for the opportunities that she's been able to have, but for women's athletes, Jonathan Bateman, how that's helped her. So a lot of cool stuff. We, I, I, th I think we had a lot of different stuff with Lexi. So excited Good. for that conversation. We'll have that for you coming up at hour number two. And as always, we want you to be a part of the program. Phone numbers 402-413-2400. You can either call or send off a text. Well, there was <laughs> as much of a fishbowl as Husker football lives in when the website, Huskers.com, updates the roster page a couple of times a year, it seems to make waves. Well, that happened earlier today. They updated the re website, took some names off, guys that have left the program, some walk-ons who no, are no longer part of the program, a couple of scholarship guys, Kane Williams, Ethan Piper, who I think we kind of knew Ethan was done. That, that leg injury he suffered was just horrific. I don't know that he could ever play a competitive sport at the Division I level again. They're no longer on the roster. Isaiah Garcia Castaneda is still on the roster, even after he had that big knee injury early in the, the past season. But, man, there were articles flying out the door everywhere today just because the roster page got updated. So, I mean, I, th I thought Ethan Piper's eligibility was done. He could come back, but I think that leg is, well, yeah. I'm not sure he could rehab that thing. Yeah, back. I mean, he was, he, boy, when he rolled out there, he had like his arm in a sling on uh -huh. crutches. You know, it just. He was in a wheelchair for a while. Yeah, he was being pushed around. Turner Corcoran was pushing him around a little bit. So, and it was, it looked pretty devastating and, and seeing him leave the field. And I think that's just a guy, he's, he wants to be a teacher. He's really passionate about doing other things outside of football, wants to, make an impact and, and so I think for him you know sometimes I think these seniors even though you have the extra year it gets to the point where you know maybe my body can't do it as well I'm ready to, to move on to that next chapter and uh, good news about Isaiah Garcia Castaneda that he can come back which he didn't make the four roll right so he because he was hurt in um, was it Minnesota no I thought he yeah it was Minnesota it was the opening game yeah. of the year yeah think about it. I mean he might have ended up being Maybe the top. I mean, Bill, he, he and Billy, I think, would have battled for the most catches on the team if he'd have played a whole year. Yeah, and he was doing a lot of things really well. They were really raving about his progress, how he was attacking things, learning and growing within this program. And I, I heard it from multiple staff members about how even when he came back and, and um, you know, and I even talked to him in fall camp, and, and he was just so appreciative of the opportunity. But the, the staff members from strength and conditioning to the members of the staff always said that he's doing everything right. Everything we're asking him to do, he's doing that and then some. So um, I'm sure for him it was he was grateful for another opportunity but wanted to make the most of it. And so and I, I think he liked it. I like, think he liked the direction it was heading, like a lot of these these players that haven't entered the portal or wanted to stick around, like a Ty Robinson, I think they, they want to be a part of it. And so I think certainly Isaiah is, is one of those guys. I'll be rooting for him, hoping he can make a make You were a, a big dent. fan of his two years ago. I sure was. I just liked the way he carried himself. I liked the way he ran routes, all those things. So fingers crossed that it works out for Isaiah. He'll be a part of spring football coming up here uh, shortly. I mean, it'll be about, about, we're about six weeks away from the start of spring football practice, again, with the spring game April 27th. Remember, tickets go on sale next week on the 5th it's season ticket holders have a chance to buy tickets and then the general public on the 6th will get a chance to buy tickets and get them through huskers.com all right other big news today we talked about we've got basketball tomorrow night and then on thursday night the women tomorrow the men on thursday the big 10 conference today did announce their plans for basketball for next year with the addition of the four schools from the pac-12 conference the regular season will not change. The men will continue to play 20 regular season games. The women will continue to play 18. I'm a little bit surprised that the women didn't bump that up to 20. So now they're basically they're going to play everybody once. There will be no double plays in Big Ten women's hoops. A little I, odd. I don't love that because, which I understand, again, you have to navigate a schedule, but a lot of times if you lose to a team that maybe you should have beat, if you play them twice, you get a chance to avenge that loss. Right. For example, Nebraska at Minnesota, women, had a chance to win that game, couldn't quite pull it out, but Minnesota's coming here, so you got a chance to win that game to, to kind of right that wrong later on in the season. And so I, you kind of like having those doubleheaders sometimes to be able to say, okay, well, we split or avoid a sweep and showing, hey, we can, we can actually beat this team. It just wasn't our best night. So I don't love that, but... You know, I, I understand they're trying to navigate it. I'm, I'm surprised that they didn't go up to 22, 20 as well. Well, let me take that back. I guess if 18 teams, you said, some, you're going to play somebody twice, one team twice, right? Because you're going to play 18, you play because you don't play yourself. So 
The bigger change is to the tournament. We've been, everybody has gone to the tournament. All 14 teams have gone. Growing to 18, they're going to let 15 teams go to the tournament starting next year. So three schools will not qualify and will not get a chance to participate in the conference tournament. Which, again, 15 just seems like a weird number to Isn't me. Isn't that odd? Why don't you do 16 and keep it even? What they wanted to do, I think, is give the upper half a bye. So the top nine, nine out of 18, get a bye. Yeah, so then you'll I, have 10 play 15, 11 play 14, 12 play 13. So you're adding one more game on that first day where right now you play two, there'll be three. And the top four teams will get a double buy, which they should. They've earned that by what they've done through the regular season. So that's the minor tweak next year. Going to be tough. You, you, you're you're going to have three teams that are not going to be a part of wherever the tournament is. So you better take care of business and, right? and get yourself into that tournament because that's, that that's, is what's great about college basketball. A lot of times you see teams make – punch their ticket because they won a, a conference tournament, a team that wasn't supposed to, that get in, and then they're kind of the darling of the NCAA tournament. So those conference tournaments are, are important and a big opportunity for those teams that maybe didn't have quite the season in the regular season to try to put something together, put a run together. Uh, so, but hey, you better, you better make the field first to be able to have that opportunity right. now. Right. You know, and you... I, I know it's, it probably disappoints some people, but an 18-team tournament would probably make you extend that tournament one more day. Teams are already worried about their grind, grind their yeah. legs. The big tournaments, the, travel, the, the big tournaments in a week. I yeah. mean, you want to don't want to wear yourself out for the NCAs. Well, and that's what you see sometimes. A lot of teams that maybe have secured a number one seed, they do not go deep in their conference. No, yeah. they kind of take it easy so that they can get some rest going in. Not that I, mean, I don't know if anybody goes in to lose, but you, it's, it happens more times than it doesn't that you see some of these teams that are highly favored that have that top seed locked in to maybe make an early exit so that they don't have to go through the grind of a, a basically a tournament before the tournament. So right. you extend another week of having to turn right around and play back-to-backs or less rest, less prep, and then that selection show and is Sunday, which the Big Ten always leads right into it. Yep. And a lot of tournaments ends on that Saturday, but the Big Ten leads into it for CBS. And so it's, that's, a, that's a lot to, to take over. But, hey, um, I'm so excited to think about the tournaments almost here. A month. A month away. Yeah, well, about six weeks well, away. Yeah. Got all February and the first Women couple weeks of March. Women are the week before the men. So yep. tournament action does start yep. in like five weeks. So mm -hmm. that, that came out from the league today. We've been kind of waiting to hear about it. We, you know, we got the football schedules dropped in November, so we have that. You kind of knew you needed some kind of direction for where basketball was going to go, and, and I'm sure they're working on some of the other sports as well as they make their way uh, through all of that. All right, so those are some of the headlines of the day today. Looking forward to this show tonight. Again, 402-413-2400. If you want to be a part of the program tonight, that would be on our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. Woodhouse is your trusted auto partner. They have... 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. When we come back, a sit down chat with the new co offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach Glenn Thomas. That's coming up next. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. Let's face it, nothing makes you look older than you really are than thinning hair. But what if you could not only increase your hair count, but promote new hair growth without surgery? without drugs with potential side effects, and without a prescription from your doctor. Well, now you can, thanks to a breakthrough new supplement called Hair Grow. Provided by New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Europe. Hair Grow is now available in the U.S. Only Hair Grow contains Tokogaya, a powerful antioxidant that has received a U.S. patent. Multiple clinical studies show Hair Grow is safe and effective in promoting new hair growth. In one study, 95% of the patients using hair grow saw increased hair count. Don't lose more time and more hair. Try hair grow today to feel and look your best. Just go to newnordicusa.com or visit Walgreens or Amazon to purchase. Look younger and feel more confident with hair grow by New Nordic at newnordicusa.com.
Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. There's no community like a Cenex community, and that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Center. It is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. We are delighted to be joined tonight by the newest member of the Nebraska football coaching staff, Glenn Thomas, the new co-offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach. Congratulations. Welcome to Lincoln. Thank you, man. Fired up to be here. What? Uh, Why this make sense for you? Take me kind of through the process you were thinking about. Well, it checked all the boxes for me. I mean, obviously a unique situation with familiar faces. As soon as I walked in the building, it was, it was cool to see all the familiar faces from, you know, Garrett McGuire, who I coached in, in college, to, you know, EJ was in the recruiting department back in the day, Coop, I mean, you name it, from SP all the way down. So it just made total sense in that way. And then obviously I knew the expectation from Coach Rule as far as culture uh, standard, what he really preaches here. I understand what that was, and I felt like I could add to that coming here to the staff. Fantastic. You you have kind of pinballed in your career from the NFL to the college game. Tell me the kind of the, the pluses of that, the, to be able to be exposed to the football at the highest level and then bringing it back to the college level. Well, I think from a professional perspective, uh, you know, I think you have to approach it a little bit different. Obviously, you're dealing with a you know, a grown man that has a mortgage and kids and the whole deal, you know, and, you know, been in the league eight, ten years, whereas you're coming here, maybe you're dealing with an 18-year-old freshman that's kind of creating that foundation of football. So I think you have to approach it a little bit different, uh, which I think that's maybe a better coach, to be quite honest. Um, you know, I've dealt with a, a seven year, seventh-year pro bowler at quarterback, and I've dealt with an 18-year-old true freshman having to get thrown in as a starter in college football. So I think 
you know, that's helped me really be conscious and deliberate in my coaching style and then how I deliver information. So that in itself has been, a, I feel like, a blessing in my career. That is a perfect segue into what I wanted to ask you next. You're inheriting three scholarship quarterbacks, Heinrich Harburg, who started some games this past year, and now two incoming true freshmen. That's kind of exciting, right, to kind of get them right out of high school where they maybe don't have bad habits yet, they don't know what they don't know. This, your thoughts about having a couple of young pups like that in the room? Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It's a challenge. You know, obviously early in that process, you got to figure out where they are, what is their, what is their uh, a floor, if you will, and then build upon that. You know, I think there's a lot of feedback, feedback that needs to happen early. Let them talk. Let them communicate what they know, their experiences, what they like, what they think they like and then how you can build upon that. So I think that's probably the first challenge. Um, obviously, all three have had, you know, success. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm excited about that. We've kind of started that process a little bit. Yeah, I've just been here a few days, but, but excited about, uh, about that. Um, I knew Dylan a little bit through when I was at Arizona. We had, uh, you know, a history when, when he was there. Didn't know Danny or Heinrich, but uh, really impressed with those guys in my initial conversations. Extremely hard uh, workers, leaders. You can already tell that they got a great aura and persona about them. So I think we're in a great place with those guys. Coach, I know you spent some time in the NFL with Matt Ryan. It was a terrific quarterback there. Really good quarterbacks have what qualities? Do you think? I think just the intangibles, and that's very cliche. And then somebody says, "Well, what are you looking for in a quarterback?" And you know, people say the it factor. You know, at the end of the day, you got to process and you got to make plays and, and play to your strengths, you know. Like, uh, you know, Matt, for example, didn't necessarily have a big, strong arm and he wasn't necessarily overly athletic, but he had a knack to get the ball where it needed to be, when it needed to be there. And he understood what his skill set was and then how to make plays under that uh, situation. Each quarterback's a little bit different. You know, maybe a guy that's a little bit more athletic that doesn't throw it quite as good than. Maybe you need to utilize those things, and, the, and then that quarterback himself needs to be more aware of those to make those plays. So I think part of our job as coaches is to create that environment to maximize their skill sets so they can perform at that level. So um, that's a broad answer, and I don't think there is a pinpoint answer, but I think there needs to be an acknowledgement of skill set. What are you really good at? And try to uh, uh, major in those qualities. Again, visiting with Glenn Thomas, the new co-offensive cool coordinator, quarterbacks coach for the Cornhuskers, announced by Coach Rural just a couple of weeks ago. The two freshmen, Daniel and Dylan, very highly touted, just incredibly successful high school careers in their own rights. Where, where do you start? Where, where do you start from now and then get them ready for spring practice here in a couple of months? Well, I think it's not just them. It's, I think it's all of us, right? I mean, we're kind of starting from day one. You know, I'm, I'm kind of learning the offense myself. I don't think it's any more pressure on them than it is for me. I mean, we're both kind of starting, like I say, day one, page one of the playbook, and, and what, what did they do last year? As I kind of go through the playbook, and what did they do last year? How can we tweak, or how did you coach this? How can we maybe, you know, adjust it a little bit? So I think it's all of us as far as start from the very basics and build upon that, you know, and then some, some days we'll go a little faster, and some days we'll have to take a step back and revisit. So I, I think we're all kind of starting from square one and, and looking forward to building forward. I'm fascinated by your co-background in college football in the NFL. Obviously, in the NFL, they communicate with the quarterbacks through the helmet, the microphones. We're not doing that yet at the college level. I think they experimented with it in some bowl games this past bowl season. Give me the plus and minuses well, of that from I, your standpoint. Yeah, it's, it's unique. Uh, I remember back, I mean, it's been 15 years ago now where, you know, I was on the sideline pushing the button, telling the play into Matt Ryan, and that was coming from the coordinator up in the stairs, right, it's upstairs. So... You know, he, he gives you a 15-word play, 15 word play. Yeah. he tells it to me, then I have to push the button, give him 15-word play, and then he's got to relay that to the huddle, right? So there's a huge process that's got to take place while the play clock's going, and there's 70,000 people in the whole deal, right? So it, it gets a little crazy at times. Um, you know, that's why people really, to be quite honest, are kind of going to some of the wristband stuff yeah. so you can eliminate some, you know, if you can you know, take out eight, eight, ten seconds, you know, that's a big difference, you know, it takes a lot of stress off of everybody. So, and then in college football with all the signals and all that stuff, um, you know, maybe that takes it out even a little bit more. So, you know, different ways of going about it, but, uh, but I think it's in a good place. I'll be curious to see where that does go 
if we do, you know, get the voice, you know, communicator and the helmet moving forward. Well, our athletic director is pretty involved in some of those rules committees and stuff, so he's kind of on the cutting edge of, of all of that moving forward. Well, I, I know it's probably really hectic in your life now to try to get moved, get here, get your family. Just update, tell Husker Nation about your family and, and where are you right now, dear? Are you living out of a suitcase? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, but uh, to be expected early. You know, I, I've had the most success in my career getting my family here as fast as we can. We've actually already under contract on a house. They'll be here in a few weeks, and we're off and rolling. My family's super excited to be here. Uh, we have two little boys. I say little boys, 13 and 11. Uh, they're their coaches' kids and just fired up to be here and get plugged into the community, uh, which is fantastic. I mean, I, that's one thing as you walk in here and you feel the energy of what Lincoln is and the support of what this place is is unique. It's like no other. I mean, we were at the basketball game last week, weekend and for junior day and just walking in there and you feel the, the, the energy in the stadium and people, you know, hey, coach, glad to, glad to have you here. And it's just, you know, it's really cool. You really feel it when you're actually here. Yeah, you're going to be a rock star instantly. That's the way this fan base is. What about, what were your first impressions when you walked into the stadium? You've probably had a tour of the new facility, which is going to be completely open here in a few months. Your thoughts about what you have to work with here? Uh, more than expected. More than expected. I, you know, you kind of have your expectations moving in, but are walking in here, and then all of a sudden you see it, you feel it. Um, you know, obviously the new facility is what it is. I mean, it is like no other. I mean, at any facility in the, in the world, I would guess, and, and how we're going to be able to recruit to that. I think that's a huge part of it, but I, just as more, just as impressive as that, as you walk in and you feel the energy, excitement within the players, I think was just as impressive. You know, to go into a, you know, 6:30 a.m. workout and see the guys bouncing around, the urgency to get better, the energy, the excitement, how they're pushing each other, uh, that that created as much excitement for me as anything, because the culture is in place and it's headed in the right direction. Give us all kind of just a, a feel for your your. The, your path along with Coach World. T take me back to when you guys first met, all that. Well, when I was with the Falcons um, in, in, in 14, and then I had a chance, um, Coach Sat and I, we've known each other for 20 plus years, and uh, they had an opening at quor a quarterback position at Temple in Philly. I did not co know Coach Rule at the time, but uh, had a chance through Sat to get a chance to talk with Coach Rule. And, it, it lined up that that was going to work out. So I had got a chance to go up to Philly and be the quarterback coach up there in 15. And, and um, you know, I, I, that was a great time. You know, I'm from a little small town in West Texas and to end up in Center City, Philadelphia was really a great experience for me, you know. And uh, we were able to win some games and, and had some production. And, and um, so that was kind of my first uh, interaction, obviously, with Coach Rule. And then from then on, you know, he's been a mentor for mine and for, of mine. And, and uh, uh, really uh, respect what he does and what he, you know, how he builds programs. Well, again, congratulations on the job. It's great to have you here. Uh, I know you guys are probably anxious to get in with your, but there's this thing called recruiting. You probably still have to be doing some of that. I know you probably just love to sit down with, with your, your quarterback's room and go through all that stuff, but you got, that's part of the game, right? That's part of the gig, right? Getting out and doing some recruiting. It is, it is, but I'm, I'm excited about it because of what, what this place is all about, you know, not only like the facilities, which obviously we're talking about, but just the culture that's in place here and the excitement to get better every day. Um, that makes it easy to go talk to a high school guy and, and really try to, uh, allow them or uh, let them show them what this place is all about and how they can b keep continue to build on what's in place here. Fantastic. Coach, congratulations again. Look forward to working with awesome. you. Awesome. Great to see you. Glenn Thomas, co-offense corner, quarterback's coach for the Cornhuskers here on Sports Sunday. We have more coming up next. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Don't miss out on limited time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1 4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. 
Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Former Husker basketball standout and professional basketball player Stephen Bradford is hosting tryouts for his AAU basketball program, Lifeline Elite Sports. The next tryout for grades 2 through 8 boys and girls teams is this Saturday, February the 3rd from 6 to 9 in Omaha at Brownell Talbot School. High school tryouts are coming in March. For more information, visit Lifeline Elite Sports on social media. To sign up for tryouts, go to LifelineEliteSports.com. That's LifelineEliteSports.com. Take your car buying experience to new heights with Woodhouse Mazda. Shop our full lineup of luxurious CUVs that will transform the way you travel, like the spacious and sophisticated Mazda CX-90 or the sleek and sporty Mazda CX-5. Plus, receive 0% APR for 60 months on select models of the 2024 Mazda CX-5 with no payments for 90 days. With approved credit, tax title, and license extra. Win finance through Mazda Financial Services. $299 dock fee due at signing. Some model exclusions apply. Offer expires January 31st, 2024. See dealer for details. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Folks, you can win a 2024 Porsche Macon from Porsche of Omaha this season. Husker fans are getting a chance to win that Porsche. They make a full court putt at halftime of one of the men's basketball games. If you want to get yourself registered to be a contestant, go to huskers.com slash putt. Welcome back, Sports Alley, here on a Tuesday night. Great to hear from Glenn Thomas. His feet have only been on the ground here a couple of weeks, but good to have him on board. He's still trying to figure out where everything is around the building. But, hey, it's feet to the fire, right? Yep. Get right in here. I, I love how it's kind of a little bit similar to what we heard from Tony White. Like, hey, we get here, we're settled in, already going to the, the games and appreciate just such an appreciation. But uh, my big thing, I love what he said about the quarterbacks and just how it's, it's not one size fits all and you, you tailor things to their strengths. And I think the best quarterback coaches, the best offensive coordinators do that. It's, it's what fits your quarterback and you can tweak things to that. And so I'm excited to see how he works. He's got a he's got a fun uh, kind of season ahead uh, with those young quarterbacks to be able to mold and grow. He's got to be just chomping at the bit to be able to get his hands on those guys. I think he is, you know, and I think it's it's kind of a, a cool thing. Obviously, you'd love to walk in and have a veteran guy that's really established himself. And then Heinrich, he's got somebody at least that's played quite a bit. But the other two, they're brand new to college football, but they don't have bad habits yet. So you can really teach them how to be an effective and solid college quarterback. So a lot of work to do. I don't know that he spent a ton of time around them yet. These coaches have been out doing a lot of recruiting. We're in an open period where they can go visit schools. But that shuts down here this weekend. And so then he can fully be around Dylan and Daniel and Heinrich as they get ready for spring practice toward the end of March. So I, I liked him. I liked his energy. I liked 
it just seemed like he had a, a kind of a, there was a glow about him that yeah. I liked. Yeah. You said that immediately after you talked to him. Like, he, you really enjoyed chatting with him. You liked just his his presence, his aura, and, and all of that. So I'm excited to, to get to know him and see what he does with this, these quarterbacks. Good stuff. Great, great to, that he could squeeze us in and his busy schedule to, to visit with us for just a few minutes. All right, time for us to pick out our BMO Athlete of the Month as we're coming down the stretch. Tomorrow will be the last day of January. I'm going to give you my short list, okay? Okay, okay. See if we match up. Ridge Lovett has been dominant. Yeah. Pinning people left and right. Got a pin Sunday against Wisconsin. Number one in his weight class in the country at 149. Rink Mass has had some special games. Obviously, the 34 against Ohio State was incredible. Alexis Markowski has been putting up double-double after double-double for the Husker women's team. And my other one is Henry Zimmerman, who is a weight thrower for indoor track. He's already set the school record in the weight throw and is off to a great start. Young guy has been in the program for a couple of years. Those are kind of some names that I had on my list. That's a good one. Uh, like I had Alexis Markowski as well. I had C.J. Wilcher on my list okay. because just what he's done off the bench. I think with Rink, I, I did mention Rink in, in the career high, but C.J.'s been, you could argue, maybe the most consistent player, right? And, and the spark that he's provided off the bench and some of these big wins, uh, he's on my list. Um, I've got Nash Hutmaker because I wanted to give him. Interesting. I wanted to give it to him back in the fall, but we never could because we gave it to volleyball and then soccer, and I don't think I ever. And so he was a nominee for me back during football season. But for what he's done on the wrestling mat, given the time, the amount of time that he's been able to train for it, the amount of weight that he's lost, he went three and one in the month of January. And hasn't been wrestling very much. For a couple much. years. And barely lost his bout with in the Iowa duel because, mm -hmm. and I think just maybe, again, maybe a little bit of ran out of gas, ran out of steam there. It went through three periods, and he was right there in it. So um, I think just the his willingness to help out what Mark Manning said about him and how he wanted to, to jump right in and help. Hey, coach, I'd love to help. And how he's embraced it. It seems like the team really, the wrestling team really likes him. So he's been a good addition. So I just, I think even beyond his performances, and now people are, are really interested and intrigued. People are showing up the, what the football team has done. I, I just think it's been a fun story. So uh, a little bit of everything. I, I think I'll give mine to Nash Hotmaker. Okay. I think that's a solid pick. And he's brought attention, certainly, yes. to the wrestling yeah. team as a whole. So, you know, you and I have talked about does he have the stamina? to wrestle at the Big Tens? Does he have the stamina to wrestle in the NCAA? I don't know because you've got to have multiple matches. I don't know if he's going to be ready to be able to do that, but it has been fun to follow him, and that was a terrific match that he had Sunday in Wisconsin. Great. Yeah, I, I just I, I don't know how quickly it takes to get into wrestling shape where you can go throughout a tournament. Is it something that you can do in a matter of two months? I don't know because these guys know. train year-round. I know. Even once they're their season is done. They get very little time off before they get back in the wrestling room. They work all throughout the summer, and then they've got their preseason. So I don't know how long it takes for him to feel like. So, so that will be a storyline that will be fascinating to watch. And that, for that reason, too, I, I lean towards giving it to him now because I don't know if we'll see him in March. That could be. You know? Yeah, that could be. I don't know. We'll see. So Nash Hotmaker is going to be our BMO Athlete of the Month. BMO, proud sponsor of the Huskers Radio Network. We're committed to helping our customers make real financial progress. To learn more, visit BMO.com. All right, 402-413-2400, the number to be a part of the program. If you got a question with a, a, a comment or the phone is, lines are open, text lines are open, and we did have a text. We've got a new quarterbacks coach and a new tight ends coach. Uh, what coaches did we lose? Okay, Josh Martin was the interim tight ends coach. Remember Bob Wager? who uh, was let go of his duties back in the summer, uh, got a DUI, got cut loose. So Josh Martin got elevated as the interim tight ends coach. So Coach Satterfield was coaching the quarterbacks. He will coach the tight ends. So he just slides over to that. And so the full-time opening was there for Glenn Thomas to come take that, uh, that, that particular role. So you still have just a 10 coaches. So that's a great question. Glad that was asked. But Josh Martin goes back to being an analyst. I know Coach 
Rural really appreciated Josh stepping in at the last minute. It, this happened like two days before camp began that they had to make that change to the tight end spot, and they elevated Josh from a, an analyst role to that. He'll go back to the analyst role. And I think the plan really was, even when Coach Rural was putting the staff, Jessica, together 12 months ago, I think he kind of wanted Marcus Satterfield to be the tight ends coach, but some other things didn't quite happen right, so he took the quarterbacks. But I think Glenn's really a guy that has done – coaching the quarterbacks both at the college and the NFL level. That's hard to beat. And just think about some of these young quarterback recruits now to have a guy, hey, I've been in the NFL, I've worked with quarterbacks at the highest level. That's got to be a good sell, too, in terms of, you know, getting some of those guys here. And so uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how this all works. And just, you know, it was a process, I'm sure, for Coach Roll to figure out where guys fit in what spots and what roles. I know even with – just his staff figuring out, even the support staff, how people fit where. So you go through a season, kind of figure out what your needs are. So he's probably got a better feel of, of what everybody needs and, and how things could maybe operate better and improve. And so um, here's one of those instances, and we'll, we'll see. And um, But these are all guys that are all familiar with each other. They are. You know, and, and the fact that he coached Garrett McGuire, that's a cool storyline. Uh, Coach Satterfield and... Coach Thomas both have been a part of Coach Rule's staff, so they understand the system. It's not like you're working somebody and has never worked around in this environment with Coach Rule and how things he likes things to operate. So to me, I would think that it would be a smooth transition for them to be able to work together too. Rudy in Florida likes our choice of Nash. The perfect uh, choice for our athlete of the month. Art in Los Angeles says, Greg, since you're a Chiefs fan, are you also a Swifty? And what do you and Jessica think about this Taylor Swift deal? Did you... Did you see oh how many people are worried if she doesn't make it back in time from Tokyo to get to the Super Bowl? Um, I'm not a Swifty, but I have daughters, and a couple of them really love Taylor Swift. I don't dislike her, but I'm not, I'm not playing her tunes a lot when I'm driving into the office. I am a Swifty, okay. so I, I think I got a good perspective on this. I, I think I understand how people, why people are getting a little bit frustrated. I even think she's getting frustrated with how much she's being shown and being followed around, but she is you could argue maybe the biggest artist in the world. Uh, right. And just the tour that she's been on, there's a lot of lot of interest in her, everything that she does, no matter what it is, whether it's a football game or elsewhere. I, I can understand why people get frustrated with how much it's being made about her. But also, for me, I see a lot of tweets and of dads that are saying now their daughters want to watch football. And it's not even just watching the Chief games. I've seen... Uh, like three people that have talked about how their young daughter wanted to watch football, never did before, but not just the Chiefs games. They wanted to watch. It was the, I think a couple weekends ago, maybe the opening round, how I think the Chiefs played first and then there was a game after. But not only did she want to watch that first game with the Chiefs, then she wanted to watch the second game and how the interest is growing with a young, a different generation, a different you know, a different audience. I think that's, I think that's neat. And so I, I, I for, as a young girl, for me, I wasn't really into football growing up, but so to maybe have had an interest like that, that maybe drew me into it, maybe I would have liked football more growing up, but because we didn't play it in high school. So I wasn't as necessarily as huge of a football fan. I was more into basketball. But I think it's cool, you know, and you're getting a new audience and a new generation that, that like football. I think that's cool. I, I, I think it's great. And again, I think somebody went back and added it up. She got 44 seconds of airtime in the game Sunday, in a game that was three and a half hours long. 44 seconds bothers people that much? Really? I Come think, on. I think it's beyond even just the TV time. It's social media, too. You see that it's yeah. everybody's posted the pictures, and then the all, every media f is following her around, everything that they're doing. And so then you get all the different videos. And so I think it's more so just even on social media, it's blowing up everywhere so I can understand how it can be overwhelming for sure. I, I even think, she, like I said, I think she would prefer it to not be as big of a deal around her. I agree. Cole, David, you guys Swifties? I am not, unfortunately. <laughs> Cole is not. Well, I do, I do enjoy some of her songs, but I'm not waiting for the next album yeah, or right. anything. David, David, is David a Swiftie? Hold on. Oh, absolutely I'm a Swiftie, but yes, you know, I think... On. Like, I heard this on a podcast the other day. They're like, they should, no, it's a professor. They were saying that the NFL should be thanking every God known to man that Taylor Swift is giving even a sliver of interest into their program because everyone knows Taylor Swift. And like Jessica was saying, now there's people who love Taylor Swift and now are bringing their interest not only to the game to watch those 44 seconds of her, but now to watch the three and a half hours of the game. So I think it's, I think it's great for both parties. 
kind of what you said. Great take, yeah. David. Good, Good stuff. stuff. All right. You got a take on that, 402-413-2400. You want to be a part of the program. That is our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. They are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. One final to take on that. Think about when you watch the Cowboys. How often is Jerry Jones shown in a football broadcast? At least that much, if not more. So would you rather see Taylor Swift or Jerry Jones well, during a football broadcast? I can't Jerry Jones, right? so I'm all in on seeing Taylor Swift. It's any big celebrity that is sitting in a suite that goes and watches a game, that's what they do. They hone in on that. You see it over. It's, it just happens that Taylor Swift has been in almost every Chiefs game this right. season. But every time that a big-name person outside of football is sitting somewhere, look how much they showed Jason Kelsey when he was there, you know, when Jason Kelsey was watching the Chiefs. So it's, it, it's what the TV broadcasts do. And they, it's every sport, if they find somebody in the stands that's, notable they they want to show their reaction to the sport yeah steven in bellevue said, <laughs> said the same thing about uh, jerry jones and the dallas games what's the difference with, but between that i i cannot you mentioned jason kelsey my wife is addicted to that podcast yeah it's a great she, podcast. she listens to it every week when they drop it it's a great podcast it's hilarious it's entertaining i want to know what cam jurgens thinks of jason i think he really likes him i haven't seen cam but I saw him on the sideline at Rutgers last year, and he was a big fan, and also of Jalen Hurts, but he, I think he's a, he's a really big fan of Jason Kelsey, has appreciated the things that he's done for him. I think you and I have talked about this, but Jason, if he was, it was important for him to have the next him that could slide into his spot. He loved Cam Jurgens' tape. He was a big advocate for him getting drafted to Philadelphia, and so I think he's a, unless things have changed in a year, I think probably it's only grown. I think he's probably got a great deal of respect and admiration for Jason Kelsey. But hopefully Cam's back for the spring game or sometime soon and we can maybe talk to him about all that. I bet he does. I bet we'll see him back in Lincoln sooner than later. All right, 402-413-2400. Keep the reaction coming. Love it. We're back to wrap up our one next. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Woodhouse Nissan makes shopping for your next vehicle simple. Browse our inventory, apply for financing, and more from the comfort of your own home. Right now, lease the 2023 Nissan Rogue SV for $299 per month for 36 months and 5,000 miles per year. With approved credit, tax title license extra, $2,999 down or trade equity. First payment in $299 dock fee due at signing. $650 at MAC lease cash rebate available towards field. Discounted price based on sale price of $31,450. VIN number PW484020. Offer expires 131.24. See dealer for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Well, if problem gambling is burning up your money, there's a way out. Help is free and confidential for Nebraskans and their families. There's no judgment, just help. Visit LifeAfterBet.com. Tomorrow night, women's basketball. The Huskers will host the Purdue Boilermakers, 7 o'clock at PBA. Amy Williams had a presser earlier today. We'll hear some of those clips coming up in hour number two. The men will play the sixth-ranked 
Wisconsin Badgers on Thursday night. And by the way, remember the challenge that the athletic director threw out there a week or so ago on his show to sell out PBA? There's, uh, there are tickets still available for Thursday's game. Really? In, in quite Against a few. Against Wisconsin? Quite a few. That's crazy. 7.30 tip. So if you've been wanting to see the Oscars or if you've seen them and enjoyed it, man, get out there. That team really could use a nice win to end, or I guess it'll be February the 1st, but uh, after the, the tough game at Maryland last week, they could really back bounce back win. So tickets still available for that game on Thursday night. That surprises me. That's one of the prime games of the year. And, I, you know, I know it's a Thursday night, but it's not at 8. It's at 730. That's a half hour sooner for you to get home and get to bed, right? Yeah. Not a bad time. No, not at all. And so, it's just a fun, it's a fun atmosphere. There were, there were quite a few empty seats in the upper, upper tank for the Ohio State game, too. That's, hmm. I, I mean, God, I, I've really enjoyed watching this team play. I, I think they've been so fun to follow all, all season long. So let's hopefully we get those tickets uh, tickets pushed out the door in the next 48 hours for that game on um, Thursday night against the Badgers. Huskers then go back on the road for two toughies at Illinois at Northwestern. Those will be tough games uh, for the Cornhuskers. The women are home both games this week with Purdue tomorrow, Rutgers on Saturday. Big games there for the women. They gotta, they're, we've talked a lot about their net ranking and where they are, and um, they need to protect the home court here coming up. And then I'm excited about that. I know... Look, if you ask anybody in the, on the staff about, or on the team, they are very, very much about one game at a time. But just knowing that PBA is going to be sold out for them here with Iowa and how well they played against Iowa at, during stretches throughout that game, I'm excited about that one. But there's some big, big time games for this women's basketball team. And if they keep on the same trajectory, this is going to be an NCAA tournament team. They uh, have put themselves in they a good have, position. Yeah, they're in a really good spot there. Carla uh, on our text line said, good evening, folks. Last fall, I wonder who would last longer in the media spotlight, Swift and Kelsey or Deion Sanders in Colorado? <laughs> How about as, that? As long as Swift and Kelsey stay together, I, th I kind of think them. Because they're like multi multimedia, right? They're not just sports. They get a lot of media coverage. And then here's the other side of this take. Uh, you guys are foolish if you believe little girls will gain a genuine lasting interest in football because of their infatuation with Taylor. This is a moment of time for them. People are just creating reasons for this ridiculousness to be a good thing for football. It is a good thing for Taylor, period. I wish she would disappear from sports. That's, okay. Uh, that's, Haters hate, right? Yeah, I Haters mean, hate. Again, entitled to your own opinion, but you are foolish to think that you can speak for all little girls, that they they won't find a love for football. I mean, maybe some of them, you're right. Maybe some of them, it will just be while Taylor is apart, but maybe some of them will find an interest in it. You never know. Like, you can't just say if, that's exactly if definitively right. that, that this is going to be the outcome. You never know. All it takes is a spark to get somebody's interest in something, and then it may take off from there. And so to, that's pretty naive to sit there and say, this, is, this will not carry over for anybody. That's really naive to say that. Look, at, look, for example, at women's sports, right? How much that's grown because they've been, people have been exposed to it more. The more that you're open, the more that you kind of see things that maybe you never have before, and then you realize, hey, you may, might like something, you might like watching something, the more it grows. I mean, I just, I think with, with women in sports from all ages, all sports, there's just been a, a huge growth in interest and participation, and I, I certainly think that this could be a part of it. I just, for, to say that they, every little girl that's watching football right now, is ne this is only going to be this season while Taylor's dating Jason, or J uh, tra uh, Travis, Travis you don't know that. You can't say that. I just You can't say if an eight-year-old might be it locked in for the rest of their lives. You don't just, know. It baffles me that this bothers people to this degree. It's unbelievable how thin-skinned you have to be to let something like that bother you. Come on. Why does that? Does it bother you when they show Jerry Jones in the booth? I go back to that again. Does it bother you when they show whoever that's watching their, their, their team play? I mean, golly. Man, grow up, people. What it, an hour, huh? It's, it's crazy that this is such a big deal. Crazy. Oh, man. All right, one hour in the books. We got Amy Williams. We got Lexi Rodriguez coming up next hour. Come on back. We'll have some more fun. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers. Growing opportunity from the ground up. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers.
Good evening. I'm David Swotek, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. A record was broken during the Husker women's basketball matchup Saturday night against the Iowa Hawkeyes. The game was the most watched women's basketball broadcast in BTN's history with over 421,000 viewers. Head coach Amy Williams was asked during the press conference what this means for women's sports. Just, it never gets old to, to be at a place like Nebraska where women's sports are celebrated and where we continue to have the opportunity to be a part of record-setting um, things. Um, you know, we're playing in front of sellout crowds. We're, we're having people tell me that it's the most watched game on Big Ten Network ever. Um, you know, those kinds of things. I, I just feel honored to, um, to be a part of that. And I think there's a lot of special things and people that go into making those kinds of things happen and it makes me incredibly grateful to to be doing this right now at Nebraska and in the Big Ten Conference with all the things that we're able to do. Coming up later in the show we will hear more from head coach Amy Williams. The Nebraska softball team has already received some recognition. As a team the Huskers are ranked within the top 25 based on four different polls and three individuals Billy Andrews, Jordy Ball and Caitlin Kaneda have all earned preseason recognition. Nebraska opens the softball season on February 8th against number seven Washington in Mexico. Finally let's take a look at some Big Ten hoop action tonight and on the men's side number 14 Illinois did not head far to Ohio State for their matchup tonight. The Fighting Illini have a slight edge leading 41 to 34 at halftime. Indiana is hosting the Iowa Hawkeyes tonight. Indiana is starting to gain a decent lead 39 to 28 at the half. Some same state action Michigan and Michigan State have their game a little later tonight starting at 8 p.m. And on the women's side, just one game tonight, Michigan State headed east to New Jersey to face off against Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights haven't won a game since December 5th and are hoping to dig out of that hole tonight. However, Michigan State has the lead at the moment, 42 to 35 at halftime. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Coming up next is Hour 2 of Sports Nightly, right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. It's Williams, a drop step, reverse layup with the left hand, and Mast is... Just dissecting Edie early in this game. Deep left wing, Jess Shelley to take the lead. You betcha. Shelley bombed a triple from the left wing and a big red lead at 36-34. On the right side to Hoiberg, right to left, top of the circle, reverses it off the throw. CJ, three is good. Got it. Bang, all right. CJ Wilcher is on fire. Goes off the bounce, goes behind your back, works foul line, pots for three, top of the key. You betcha. Natalie Potts, the Big Ten Freshman of the Week with a triple. 15 on the shot clock. Now he comes to the left side after spinning away from Barry. High post on a pop out to Mass. Nine on the shot clock. The handoff on the shot by Tominaga. Got it! Got it! Bang! 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 They say Tominaga! Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cooty on the Huskers Radio Network. And welcome back, hour number two of our Tuesday night show. Hope you had a great day today, beautiful day in and around Lincoln. We were in the low 50s, a lot of snow melt going on. They are thinking maybe 60 degrees tomorrow. Come on, might break out the shorts coming to work tomorrow. Man, and I thought 38 degrees was great. <laughs> I cannot wait. Let's go. It's going to be good. All right, uh, Husker women tomorrow night. David told you in the ticker, back home to take on Purdue. It's been a while since they've had a home game. They had the back-to-back -back roadies at Penn State, then had a, a six-day break before they played at Iowa. So it's been a while since Amy Williams' team has played at PBA. She met with the media today and said they are excited to get back to PBA. Uh, yeah, we're excited to be back at home playing in front of um, our uh, fans here at Pinnacle Bank Arena, and we know that it's going to be a tough challenge. Purdue is a 
a team that has played incredibly competitive games with some of the best teams in the country. And, and so we know, uh, just like every night in the Big Ten, it's going to be a tough task, and, and we're going to have to be um, with it and working closer towards 40-minute complete ball games. Purdue coming off of a, a pretty tight game with Ohio State, who's off, obviously very good. They beat Iowa in that overtime game a few weeks back. Purdue's not a sparkling record, but they've had some tough, tough losses uh, so far on the season. Speaking of tough losses, same thing for the Huskers. They've got those back-to-back -back road losses. Here's the coach talking about trying to put together a good response from those road games. I'm thrilled to see uh, the response of not only players in practice coming and talking and working hard and trying to find ways to elevate their game, but players that are in the offices, in with the assistant coaches, in with me, watching film, talking, having discussions about you know ways to continue to improve the commitment to coming in and getting extra shots up and, and getting extra work in outside. Um, they've stayed really diligent to that, and they continue to be motivated to work towards becoming the best team we are capable of becoming and, and continu continuing to elevate that, that bar for us. Yeah, I think for this team, it's, and Amy said this a few times uh, on the coaches' show, but then assistant coaches as well, sometimes it's, it's learning from some of the mistakes that they're making and putting together a complete 40-minute game. And it's got to be frustrating as a coaching staff to see some of the stretches that they go on, but sometimes they put themselves in too much of a hole to get out of. But there are times when this team is clicking on all cylinders. Boy, they're a tough basketball team. So it's a matter of, hey, from start to finish, can we play like that and, and do things how we're supposed to do and lock in defensively and, and all of that. So it's just a, a continue to be a work in progress. They've been really odd that they'll go, they'll go hot and cold. Yeah. They'll go through stretches where they're really shooting the ball well. And then they have some nights that it's just not going in at all. I, I know that's kind of basketball, but for me, it just seems like it's been up and down for them. Well, and especially for as good as shooters as they have. Yes. You know, like Jazz bit has been a little bit like that. And, you know, Callan Hake's a great shooter, but they, they've got good shooters on the floor. So it is a little bit odd sometimes when they have those really uncharacteristic night shooting because this is a good three-point shooting team. Right. But sometimes they don't, they don't shoot the ball well. Yeah. In contrast to the men, their ups and downs are more, they'll get turnover prone at times, or they don't rebound real well. The men's shooting percentage has been fairly even. The women, it just seems to go up and down. Now, playing at home will help. Both games this week at home, Purdue tomorrow, Rutgers on the weekend. Next week, the midweek game is at Michigan, and then back home for that game with Iowa, which will be played in front of a sellout crowd. The coach has asked about this little stretch here of three of four at home. Uh Right now, we're just keeping our blinders on and staying focused on the one at hand. And, um, you know, I think if we start getting into that habit of trying to look at stringing things together and what comes next and stuff, we maybe lose focus on, um, on what we really want to control, and that is just being the best team we can be tomorrow against Purdue to be able to, um, to, be able to get that win, and then we'll, we'll worry about the rest after. The, look, every every coaching staff, we, we've saw it with the football team that's 1-0. They just talk about this week. They don't want to talk about last week or look ahead. But you could argue that Amy Williams and this coaching staff are as much than anybody focused on one game at a time. And it's, it's fun for us to sit here and speculate and talk about, oh, well, this is what it looks like going ahead. And if they do this, then – but right now, yes, if they keep winning and doing what they're supposed to do – they certainly have a great, great, uh, they're in a great spot to make the NCAA tournament. But what goes into that for this coaching staff, it's you got to do one game at a time and you just got to take it one step at a time to be able to get there. Because if you do that, and it sounds cliche, but if you do that, then if they do what they're supposed to do one step at a time, then they're there. They have done what they needed to do to put themselves in that position. Purdue only two and seven in the league. But I, again, I think they're kind of dangerous. They lost by three to the Buckeyes, who we know are really good, a top 10 type team. Uh, a couple weeks ago, they had that rivalry game with Indiana. They got beat by six by a really good Hoosier team. They lost by 13 at Penn State, which is, you know, Nebraska just played them recently and had kind of a similar score. So six straight losses for Purdue, but I still think they're scary. Nebraska will need to play okay tomorrow night to, to get a win here. But again, this, this should be a one that Nebraska hits in the win column. 7 o'clock, tip tomorrow night, PBA, 6.30 for pregame coverage uh, here on the network with Matt Cotney and Jeff Grish. Uh, tomorrow night. David was giving you some of the scores from around uh, the league. 
tonight. You've got a couple of Big Ten games going on into the second half. Illinois up six at Ohio State at the under-16 timeout of the second half. Indiana also at the under-16 timeout, up nine on Iowa. The winner of that game will get to five and five, and that's the record that the, the Fred Hoiberg's Huskers have. Michigan, Michigan State will play later tonight. And as David mentioned on the women's side, you've got Michigan State playing at Rutgers tonight. And it is, let me get an updated score on that. It's, it's opened up now. Michigan State up by 14 mid in the third quarter of that game. Michigan State's a good team. That's a team that Nebraska, remember, played all the way back in December and got a victory over the Spartans. And that's going to look good for this Husker team. I think it's a good Michigan State squad. But uh, they're, they're having their way with Rutgers, who will be at PBA then on Saturday. All right, 402-413-2400. That is our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. Woodhouse is your trusted auto partner. They've got 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations we're making car buying on your terms visit us online at woodhouse.com when we come back lexi rodriguez off of a terrific event that she got to go with coach cook down to houston to uh, to meet a bunch of walmart folks nil deal for her we'll hear about that and all things going on in lexi's world we'll have that for you next maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing swiss traditions cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! When you're clocking out and happy hour's already started. But... You're clocking out and happy hour's already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor-saving measures, ground-truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting-edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. 
Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. I'm Jessica Hootie, and very, very excited to be joined in studio by now senior libero Lexi Rodriguez. How does that sound, senior? <laughs> oh, it's crazy. It just doesn't seem real at all. We, uh, I've told the story some, but... It seemed like just yesterday I was talking to you and Lindsay and Allie yeah. uh, as you guys were coming in as freshmen, but here you are. Um, does it feel like your last semester before you graduate? Oh, it does it. And I mean, time really does fly. And just thinking about like what's about to come and mm. how it's just going to start being like my last this, my last that. It just seems like I still have a few more years. Yeah. Well, you had a cool event that you were just a part of, so we wanted to get you here in studio to talk about that. You were at the Walmart corporate meetings in Houston, and we saw some pictures. I saw a little bit of the video. It looked like a really cool experience. Tell us a little bit about it and, and how you got involved with it. Yeah, so, um, like, Jonathan with, like, he's, like, works with NIL, and he said that there was this opportunity, and... Um, he reached out to me and I was like, oh yeah, that sounds really like a really big deal, but really cool. And um, so it was just me and Coach Cook and we, they flew us down there and um, it was a super quick trip. We got that down there at, on Sunday night and then Monday morning we went like bright and early. We went over to the convention center. We got to meet and chat with the CEO for like 15 minutes and just get a little backstory about him and mm -hmm. how long he's been working there, kind of what his job's like. And then we kind of just waited backstage and then they brought us on. We talked a little bit about our Memorial Stadium game yeah. and just about like leadership and taking opportunities and stuff like that. And that was pretty much it. And then we went back to the airport and came back. You know, it was a big event for, for Walmart, right? A, just a huge company. And for them to want to kick off their event with Volleyball Day in Nebraska, and it seems like we just keep talking about the impacts of that, but how cool was that for you to think, okay, now here we are, the season's done, but yet Walmart, this huge company, wants to, to launch their meetings talking about our Volleyball Day? I know. I thought it was really cool. And just seeing that we're, like, six months afterwards, five months afterwards, and it's still just having an impact on mm -hmm. people. And I think it was just a really cool opportunity to get to share that story with even more people that might not be as involved in um, kind of like the volleyball world or the sports world and getting to like speak at that big of a level and yeah. just I just thought it was really cool, and it was a cool opportunity. How much fun is it to do stuff like that with Coach Cook? Oh, it's fun. You know him. He, <laughs> he enjoys talking. He likes chit-chatting, um, finding connections to Nebraska and all that. But, I mean, outside of the season, he's, he, when he gets to travel and just do stuff, he has so much fun. How much do you enjoy doing stuff like that, like speaking in front of large crowds? I mean, there were thousands of people there. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of public speaking <laughs> at all. Um, I can play in front of as many people as you want, but when you <laughs> ask me to speak, it's not my favorite thing to do. But I think it's just preparing me for the future. I don't know what I'm going to do, but having experiences like that will definitely help me. Absolutely. If you would have, someone would have told six, eight, ten-year-old Lexi mm -hmm. that you were going to have an NIE, NIL deal with Walmart. What would you have said back then? Um, I 
wouldn't have believed them for sure and definitely would have been like I think they got the wrong person and I feel like I've done like a lot of things that I've just like never thought I would be able to but just doing something for such a big company it kind of like hit me like wow like this is pretty crazy you you talked about getting to spend some time with the president John uh, Ferner how how was that how was that conversation just someone that's in charge of such a large company getting to pick his brain and hear his story yeah it was really cool just seeing like how much he's in charge of and what his day-to-day -day life is and um, like even coach and him were talking back and forth about just like being in charge and having so much responsibility and just hearing like a different perspective outside of volleyball yeah. or sports or school whatever it is I thought it was really cool and then you know he was like if you ever want to work in Walmart like <laughs> give anyone a call and so like that was pretty cool too just to like make those connections yeah he said in his opening that uh, you were graduating and if you're looking for a job if you call everybody answer the phone call they, oh, they yeah. hire you they're, they're already <laughs> recruiting you that was not the only person you got to meet you got to meet Megan Maroney a country music star oh, how yeah. was that getting to that visit with her so cool because we were in our little like backstage area and you could like hear rehearsing like mm -hmm. practicing and I was like coach did you did you hear that um like she's practicing like literally like two tenths down or whatever and he was just like no like I didn't hear her. um like I'm gonna go see if we can meet her and I went to the bathroom and I came back and he's like okay you ready we're gonna meet her I was like oh okay and then she was super nice and um, he was like picking her brain about mm -hmm. if she knew like Scotty McCreary and she's like yeah I went on tour with him and then just talking about how she manages her nerves and everything like that and it was super cool and I love her music so was I he was getting... fangirling <laughs> oh, so you were, you were a fan going into before you met her oh yeah yeah I love her music that's awesome was he getting some tips from her on how to like produce and record records <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised he did it but no he did it he was pretty proud of that uh, going back to the Zach Bryan thing that he reproduced right for you guys oh yeah yeah he he played it every single day uh, <laughs> when we had a game so every like game we had he always played it, this song and he just took out like the middle part when Zach Bryant would kind of talk and he filled it in with just um, talking about every single one of his players and just where they're from and kind of motivating them a little bit but it was super cool you know just just to have an opportunity like this for a, a women's athlete we're just seeing the NIL thing really explode and be provide huge opportunities for female student athletes across all sports what does that mean to you that these opportunities are being provided for for athletes like you and, and other women across all sports I think it's awesome and I think that's now that I'm like going into my senior year something I'm trying to um, be a part of my brand a little bit is just getting those opportunities for women mm -hmm. um, volleyball players and just trying to motivate younger girls to want to do the same thing when they get older but I think it's so huge and I just feel like it's the opportunities are still growing and getting bigger for women athletes and just women's sports all over the country so I think it's phenomenal it's a good part to be or a good time to be a part of women's sports oh yeah for sure you had mentioned Jonathan Bateman and, and he moved into this role uh, about a year ago or started to, to transition into this but how much does he help you guys navigate the NIL stuff here at Nebraska oh yeah he's awesome because before he as in compliance mm -hmm. like they helped and they would have stuff for us but to have someone that you can actually go to and that's his job I think it's really helpful and he reaches out with opportunities or just if we have questions or need help with anything to navigate it and it's it's really helpful to have him as a resource very cool well uh, we had talked about it this is your last spring semester how are you approaching it have you thought about that what are kind of uh, what's your mindset I guess going into this spring semester um yeah I think we had a meeting um, like a week and a half ago when we all got back on the campus and I mean we kind of reflected on mm -hmm. last season just looking at everything we accomplished and trying to take that into this year and obviously um, coaches talked to me just about how I've accomplished a lot and the only thing left to check is a national championship and so I think with having most pretty much all of our starters returning and getting these new freshmen I just think making it a theme of how we're gonna get back to that national championship and what little steps we're going to take to finally get get crowned national champions 
One of the things that was so cool about this team, just the camaraderie, how close you guys were, the chemistry, and that all started now, this time a year ago. What was it that worked? What were some of the things that you guys did that maybe you're trying to do this starting now in January to make sure this team comes together like that? Yeah, I think the staff last year did a really good job, just especially because we had so many new people of really encouraging um, like leadership meetings and like team environment meetings and just getting us in positions where we were getting to know each other and building that chemistry like really early on and they were just there was we were always together and always encouraged to go on coffee dates or like take time to get to know one another and I feel like from the start that really helped us just build that chemistry mm -hmm. and so I think with we have pretty much the same core group, and now we have two freshmen that we have to incorporate into that. But I think it's going to be huge how we can also incorporate our two transfers, considering that they're not here. I think it's going to be huge, and I think we're going to work on, like, Zooming with them and just, like, getting in contact with them, making sure that they're still staying included in this team. You excited about a beach season? Oh, yeah. You like beach, right? I love beach. Yeah, I get to hit. I never get to do that. <laughs> it's super fun, and it's good training, so I think we all love it. Do you know your partner yet? Um, they haven't decided, but um, I've been practicing with Andy, so I think me and Andy will be a good duo this year. That's a great duo, you oh, and yeah. Andy. Oh, yeah. Um, have you had different partners every, every beach season? Um, some people switch, but for the past... Two years, so my only two beach seasons, I've been with Becca. Is that a process, too, learning how to play beach with, with a teammate? Or, oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, when you're playing indoor, you rely on just the team, yeah. the bench, the coaches, everyone, and beach is very much, it's you and one other person, so you kind of got to really get to know what your partner needs, how they thrive, what they struggle with, and it's a lot difficult to kind of manage the up and downs when it's just you and another person. But it is a lot of fun just to be able to go out there and compete. And it's, you have more responsibilities, and I think that's fun. You guys go to some cool places. Uh, you get to go to Hawaii every year. Um, how good of a workout is it? Oh, it's insane. <laughs> um, it's really hard. The cardio, the jumping, the running, everything, especially... Um, our sand court is like a lot thicker than anywhere else we play. We go to Hawaii, it's like the sand is like this thick, like it's like walking on like outside. <laughs> but our sand is so thick, so practicing in there pretty much for the whole month of February, it really gets us into shape. Well, we're looking forward to it. You know, I just kind of wanted to ask you, it, I know it was, it was tough after the national championship, but you think about all the things that this team accomplished last season. Now that you've had some time, how do you reflect on last year and, and what you guys were able to do together as a team? Yeah, I think just looking back, and we talked about it in our meeting, um, it was really, it's really hard to accomplish some of the things we accomplished. Um, Coach always says he thinks winning a Big Ten is harder than winning a national championship, mm -hmm. and that was a huge accomplishment. We only lost one game in the regular season, which is also really hard to do. And then you look at the Memorial Stadium match, that's obviously world record, and no one else has done that. And so just looking at um, from start to finish everything we did, I think that's part of the reason why that group was so special and why... Um, we were breaking records and yeah. had a fan base wherever we went. You know, I know that you guys really appreciate the fan base here at Nebraska, but I was doing some research for the National Girls and Women in Sports Day event coming up, and just the, the attendance records that you guys broke across the country, and then, you know, that was the most attended, most watched volleyball season across the whole entire sport. How cool is that for you to see that perspective, not just here at Nebraska? Nebraska's been solid in that, but just to see it kind of catch fire and, and really across the, the nation, the interest that took part that was it going into volleyball, college volleyball this season? I thought it was amazing because it really was everywhere. There were records being broken in every single conference for attendances and just you saw it literally everywhere. It was spreading into every state, um, every conference it really was. And then I think it's huge because now that there is professional volleyball league starting, mm -hmm. I just think that what's a better time than now for this sport to get all this attention? And I think it's going to be huge as these leagues are starting to grow and get more people from different colleges in the next few years. Great stuff, as always. Lexi Rodriguez, appreciate your time. Thank you.
All right, we got to step aside for a break here on Sports Nightly. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families. A legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F Series America's best selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F 150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. I'm Tom Osborne, former football coach and founder of the Teammates Mentoring Program. I'm recruiting for the team, and I want it to be the finest team in America. I'm looking for someone like you to be a teammates mentor, someone who is willing to reach out to a child and make a difference. Meeting with a student once a week at school can make an impact in their life and in the community. We want you to join our team. Go to teammates.org to apply today. Yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay. I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. There are a lot of rates out there, and it can be tough to find the right one. Well, let's make it easy. With FNBO's special offer CD of 5.5% APY for three or seven months, you can earn more, save more, and do more. That's 5.5% annual percentage yield for three or seven months with a minimum deposit of $500 and an FNBO Premier checking account. Give your savings a great big boost with the Great Big Small Bank. FNBO, member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Former Husker basketball standout and professional basketball player Stephen Bradford is hosting tryouts for his AAU basketball program, Lifeline Elite Sports. The next tryout for grades 2 through 8 boys and girls teams is this Saturday, February the 3rd from 6 to 9 in Omaha at Brownell Talbot School. High school tryouts are coming in March. For more information, visit Lifeline Elite Sports on social media. To sign up for tryouts, go to LifelineEliteSports.com. That's LifelineEliteSports.com. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Shop now during the Start Something New sales event happening now at Woodhouse Jeep in Bellevue. The 2024 Jeep Compass is delivering unmatched performance. The 2.0 liter turbo powertrain with the highest standard horsepower and torque in its class. Lease the 2024 Jeep Compass Trailhawk for just $329 per month. Based on Jeep's compact UV subsegmentation, using 2023 SIR and Edmunds cross shopping segmentation data, exclude EHEV, MHEV, HEV, and EV entrance. Based on the latest available information, 27 months, 10,000 miles per year for well qualified returning lease customers with approved credit. Tax tied license extra. $1,999 down plus first payment and $299 dot fee to its sign. Stock number BC24004. Offer expires 131.24. See dealer for details. 
Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center. It is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie back with you here on a Tuesday night. How can you, how can you not hang around that young lady and not walk away with a grin on your face? I know. Right? She's just got an infectious personality. When you talk about people that light up the room when they walk into it, it's her. Her picture is beside that definition. She is uh, as great when, I mean, she sat here and we were chatting with her about a lot of different things after the interview. I mean, whether she's on an interview or not, she is that fantastic of a person and what a great leader. And boy, her time in a uniform has just flown by. It just doesn't seem right that it's her last, about to be her last year. Crazy. And, and, you know, and I think that now that that whole group has had time to kind of process the end of the season, obviously the, the huge disappointment of getting beat in the championship match. And for Lexi now, she's been here three years. She's played. She's been in the national championship match twice, losing to Wisconsin as a freshman and then the Texas match. She's been oh so close. But you could just see the determination that she wants to, to get that trophy next year yeah and i can only imagine those conversations that she's had with coach cook about hey look what all you've done but the one thing that you're missing you know and she um for as nice and sweet as she is she certainly is a competitor and has things that she wants this team to accomplish and i think she'd trade in a lot of the individual stuff to be able to get a team goal so or a team national title and it's going to be um interesting you know this time a year ago and that's what you and i were talking about with her that the newcomers were here. Merritt Beeson was already here. The Harper, freshmen enrolled yeah. early. Not all of the newcomers are going to be here until the summer. And so that'll be an interesting transition to, and, and Coach Cook has said this a lot about how with volleyball and soccer for women's sports, they are not allowed the same type of preseason that football gets, that some of the other sports Basketball get. Basketball gets a lot Basketball, of time. Basketball, they can't be on. They're just so limited on what they can do during the summer months. And which needs to change and needs to have a different they need to be able to have be able to be on the court with the with the players more and i know that that's something that coach cook has has talked about and he's got a lot of say a lot of pull in the sport but yeah they just it's going to be interesting it's going to be a lot on those leaders to come in and, and kind of like what it was with the basketball team a little bit but you know when you've got people coming in at different times how do you get them to come together and and that because that was a big part of that team last year we went into that season thinking it might take a while for them to figure it out boy and they hit the ground running you know they went 27 right in a row before they lost one so they had a lot of stuff figured out that i know that a lot of that was what they did in the spring and summer leading into to even before they got in the court for a preseason. Nobody knew how good Bergen was going to be. Yeah, it, it, and you're, it's, you're so reliant on your setter being good. It's like the quarterback in football. We've heard that analogy all over and over and over again. And she was terrific. She's, I think, gonna, by the time she's done, she's going to be one of the best setters ever at Nebraska. And that's saying a lot because we've had some incredible ones. I think we knew Harper Murray was special. We didn't know kind of to the extent of that she would be. Andy Jackson. Andy Jackson is kind of my personal favorite. I just think she just changes, changes matches with what she does. Yeah. And Merritt Beeson, you knew she was good, but I don't know if we knew that good. Right. And so, but just the way that they all came together, there was just so much unknown about this team. You know, when we were sitting here talking about how this team's going to be formulated a year ago, how, how you know, I even asked the, the assistant coaches that on the dig several times. Would you have guessed that this team would have won this many in a row? This many? And, 
even Jalen was like, no, just because it's hard to go unbeaten, but we just, we didn't know how they're going to respond. Everything was new and they just took the bull by the horns. But so, yeah, so a big part of that and them feeling like they were ready to go and ready to mesh together was because they came in January. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong. You know, with the transfers, I think they wanted to finish out there and get their degrees and, and their, their school involved in this and classes and, and degrees. But uh, it was so important for especially those younger players to be able to be here in January to get a feel for it. Because then when it got time to be August and we're talking about them being freshmen, they, it, they didn't feel they, like freshmen. No. You know? No, not at all. And I, I think, you know, one of the things in, in Nebraska is fairly unique among the Big Ten schools to have a beach season. And Coach Cook is a big believer in it. He thinks it develops different skill sets for him, and he loves it. And Lexi, apparently, her answer to you, she really enjoys the beach part of it. I remember talking to her about beach season during her freshman year, and she was giddy talking about it, like giggling, laughing, like, I get to hit, you know? And so uh, she, yeah, I think most of the players really enjoy it. It's a way, it can get monotonous, right? Training year-round for a sport. But here's an opportunity to get to train in a way that you don't normally get to do. It's a fun, maybe change of pace, change of scenery. I think it builds camaraderie because it's, it's you and a partner and you're working with different, different players. And yeah, it's and then you get to travel and do some fun things oh, yeah. that you don't. Hawaii really stinks. Yeah, right. And, and get to go to some places that you normally wouldn't go to. And so yeah, it's a it's a great program builder for this team year in and year out. Yeah, we had her on because she just got back from this Walmart thing that she did. You know, when, when NIL was conceived, I think those type of things is what we thought would be really beneficial for student athletes. And I'm so grateful that she got a chance to do that. The 1890 initiative tweeted out a video earlier today uh, that they had a little basketball thing where members of the men's basketball team went to a community center in Lincoln and did a little quick clinic with some kids and then played, played some basketball with the kids. Those are all the good side of NIL. And I think some people in their minds go, oh, it's, it's just a dark side of college sports. And, it, and, it, and there's probably some elements of that certain places around the country. I think Nebraska does a great job of monitoring it. But watching Jamarcus Lawrence interact with a kid that just is in awe that he's sitting on the court with a Nebraska Cornell skirt, those are cool things that are being done. Well, and for women's sports specifically, there are not a lot of great opportunities to make money in the United States playing beyond college. True. What, you have to go overseas. It's, it's a hard life for both basketball and volleyball. And with softball, it's kind of not really. It's right. Just, there's there's no just, pro, the pro leagues are not what they, you know. They're not lucrative. It's not something that you can just do. You ha everyone else, they have to either play in the, w a lot of them play in the WNBA, then they go overseas. So you're talking about playing, that's hard. That's hard to do year round, playing in leagues and volleyball is the same way. And so for these collegiate female student athletes, this is where NIL is, is just such a cool deal for them to be able to capitalize, utilize on, on being a collegiate student athlete. College, women's college sports are bigger than any, what wouldn't you say, professional? S softball, volleyball. I might take tennis and golf out of it but yeah. team sports yes and um maybe gosh what it, what would be but volleyball women's basketball and softball softball you'd say that it's bigger in, in college. college than yep. it is once you're done agreed soccer maybe be just because of the no, not on the pro level, probably. The World Cup but, type but stage. But the World Cup, yeah. Olympics, there's a lot of interest in yes. Team USA. Um, but for, if you're just talking about going, what's that next step, playing professionally, there's just, you know, not, not very many people make a lot of money. And so there's a lot of, a lot of female student athletes that are able to capitalize, utilize on that, make some money here during their time as a collegiate athlete. Great to hear from Lexi. Always, always is. She's cer certainly one of the more popular athletes on this campus. Our Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. 402-413-2400, that's the number if you want to be a part of the program. We're back to wrap up tonight's show next. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. 
Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Husker fans, if you're looking for a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding and provides flexibility, your local insurance agency is hiring. No matter your skills or interests, there are opportunities for you in the insurance industry. Explore the many ways you can use your skills to protect your community by checking out the IIAN job board. Find your calling and be a part of an industry that makes a difference. Go to IIAN.org slash careers today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Experience the thrill of the open road with Woodhouse Chevy. Whether it's the city streets or rugged terrain, Woodhouse Chevy delivers an unparalleled experience. Lease a 2023 Chevy Traverse LS for $449 a month for 36 months, 10,000 miles per year. Find new roads with Woodhouse Chevy with approved credit, first payment, and $299 dock fee due at signing. Must have GM lease loyalty or lease conquest to qualify. Offer expires 131 2024. See dealer for details. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions. For every field, Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie, back with you. Final few minutes of Sports Nightly here on a Tuesday night. All right, tomorrow night, women's basketball against Purdue. 7 o'clock start, 6.30 for pregame. So only about a 30-minute Sports Nightly. We are going to talk to Justin St. Clair Husker track and field coach. They have the Frank Savine invite at the Devaney Center Friday and Saturday. Good start. Both the men and women are nationally ranked in the indoor track and field season. So looking forward to that conversation. Later in the week, we'll hear from Chuck Schmelka, men's gymnastics coach. They have their home opener coming up this weekend. We'll get a uh, chat with Coach Schmelka about what their uh, roster looks like. You're going to talk a little wrestling with Lenny Pinto who has quietly become one of the better wrestlers on this squad. I'm excited. I didn't get a chance to talk to him last year. And so, um, you know, he's explosive and was had some jaw-dropping plays or jaw-dropping, you know, moments throughout last season as a redshirt freshman. But Coach Manning has talked about how he honing in on some of that and that mental part of it. And he had a disappointing NCAA tournament that didn't sit well with him. So I'm excited to dive into all things Lenny Pinto, how he got here, and, and all that kind of stuff. We're also going to have on Friday's show a little bit of a panel. There's an event kind of involving the staff kind of celebrating women in sports. You're, you're going to be part of that. You're going to help moderate that panel. We're going to hear part of that on Friday night's show as well, right? Yes, and it's a really cool event. Did it last year, but I started to do some some prep for that. And we were just talking about it. It's pretty remarkable when you start breaking down some of the achievements of the Husker women over the past year and the things that were accomplished, both by the student athletes, but by the fans. You know, you go back to what this fan base did last year with the soccer. And so it was 2022-2023 with soccer, volleyball, women's basketball, and softball. Those four sports attendance, they were number two in the nation yeah. behind South Carolina. With what is being done here, soccer was number 10 in the nation this year. Uh, basketball right now, top 15. Softball, going to be, be sellouts. Look what volleyball did. They've, they've got a chance to push for number one with they attendance. Do. So you, you talk about attendance, but then also just the achievements of teams and individuals, the national champions, the finishes by volleyball and soccer. It's just it's been a really special year for Husker women's athletics. No question about it. And I think with the volleyball day in Nebraska, we probably win it, right? I mean, I, put 90,000 for one event, that probably throws us over the top. Well, they set the record for most, the first NCAA women's team ever in the history of 
any female sport to ha to have over 250,000 attendance is single season attendance. So just yeah, I mean, and, and that does include, but it should include. If you can, oh, if, sure. if a women's team can sell out a football stadium, then absolutely it should be counted. And um, that was kind of part of the 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 what people forget is yes, there was a concert, but. It sold out before the concert artist was even announced. We didn't know who it was. Yeah. So it's... Remember how many times people kept going, who's the artist? Who's the artist? It was yeah. weeks after the tickets were gone. Well, and you said, you kept saying, take the artist out of it and add more seats. Yeah. You know? Get rid of it. <laughs> so, we don't need a concert. I mean, it sold out before that was even... So that just goes to show you... Who was you, it? Like, it Scotty McCreary. <laughs> yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't you know, you remember. Uh, so, and I think he put on a great show, but you know, <laughs> it just, it, people, people bought those tickets to be at that event for volleyball, you know? Is that bad that I couldn't remember who the artist was? Probably a is. A little bit. But. That's all right. Yeah. All right. So we've got, we got a full week ahead. Again, short shows the next two nights because of basketball. And, and again, there are still tickets available for that showdown with Wisconsin on Thursday night. Not a lot, but several hundred are still left. So. The, the AD, the boss, Trev Alberts, last week challenged Husker Nation. Let's sell out the last five home men's basketball games. This team is trying to make a push to the NCAA tournament, trying to get in there for the first time in 10 years. Uh, they need your support. They'll need you against a really good Badgers team, which is in first place right now. It's not Purdue. It's Wisconsin in first place in the league right now. One so of the hotter teams in the country. They are Wisconsin. really hot. Um, with as hard as it is, with as tough as road games, road wins have come by for teams in this Big Ten Conference. It's not just Nebraska that struggled on the road. It's hard to get wins on the road. You have to protect home court. What goes into that, that atmosphere? There's no doubt about it. Like every player I've talked to, Coach Hoiberg comes on here, the assistant coaches, it is, it is just so emphasized how important the crowd is to what they do at home. And for them to get to the NCAA tournament, they've got to win they do. almost every game at home. So they've, they've got to protect the home court from here on out and yeah, they got to figure out ways to win on the road, but that mo more importantly right now, you've got to win every time you have a chance to play inside PBA. Got to check, got to check the box of winning all your home games and then go try to get a win or two on the road coming down the stretch. Rogers said another terrific interview, Jessica, with the multi-talented libero, Lexi Rodriguez, Go Big Red champions in 2024. Later, Roger. That's the goal. That's what that team will be working toward uh, for the next nine months to try to get back to the Final Four, which next year, I believe, is in, where did we determine it was at next year? Louisville? Louisville. I thought it was Kansas City. Two years. Oh. Louis Louisville next year, which uh, you've been in that arena. That's where the women's oh, basketball yeah, yeah, team yeah, played yeah. in the NCAA tournament a couple years ago. Yeah, BYU, so. right? Gonzaga. Gonzaga, yeah. Yeah, play Gonzaga. How can <laughs> I, I remember? Might, might. I can remember that, but I can't remember Scotty McCree well, was that, in here. Hey, Andy in the chat said, "Old age, Greg, happens to all of us." Well, I just, just think it wasn't about that. We, we weren't there. Yeah, we so, weren't there, and it wasn't about that. It was right. It was about the match. You know, not to take away from Scotty McCree, but it was about. <laughs> He's fine. It's about that record-setting day, and I mean, look what happened. They got to speak at the Walmart convention for it. I would think that they're going to be up for an ESPY. Oh, yeah, they are. You know, and yeah. so there's just the, it, it just keeps the impact. I don't know if we all knew how the impact of that day, how it would continue, the lasting impact it would have. Yeah. All right, good show tonight. Thanks, everybody, for being a part of this one. Short show tomorrow night. We'll talk some indoor track and field with Coach Sinclair tomorrow night here on the program. Thanks to David and, and do I thank Cole or is he? No, I don't need to thank Cole. Uh, th but all of you for listening tonight. Great show. We'll uh, join you again for a short one tomorrow night. Have yourself a great evening. Good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers!
Cruise. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways, we'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Purchasing your next car, truck, or SUV from Woodhouse Ford is easier than ever thanks to our streamlined buying process. Shop our current inventory and offers going on now and experience the convenience of buying with Woodhouse Ford today. Lease a 2023 Ford F-150 STX for $449 a month for 39 months, 7,500 miles per year. First payment and $299 dock fee due at signing with approved credit. Secure